Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It is... You're cold and wet. Build a fire to stay dry. Oh, I got woken up in the middle of the night. I went to sleep and thought I was good, but I'm not. Uh, all right, let's start a fire. This would be such an awful time to start a fire just because wet wood is, like, impossible to start. I just am scared of, like, what this fire is going to bring, though. Ugh, I just, I just know can feel it in my bones. Can I go back to sleep now? No, of course I can. Alright, well we're starting off in the middle of the night. Hello. Oh, he's got his feathers even. <laughs> yeah, time to eat a little morning steak or late steak, I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into, now that I have an idea of uh, how the general controls of this game work after only two episodes, I am such a fast learner. There's this really cool uh, TED Talk I listened to the other day called, uh, this, I believe it's titled The Super Mario Effect, and uh, in it it talks about um, what, what people are capable of after they're able to get over their fear of failure. And for me, that really hits home just because failure is something that like I, I definitely am always terrified of other beca because of um, actual you know expectations of me and not wanting to fail or just like my own expectations of myself and not meeting them I know for example this YouTube channel is a great example of that because I'm sitting here like wanting to make sure that I uh, succeed and do well but like nobody nobody truly cares to come watch my stuff and whatnot and it's like there's no but there's I don't know it's just this thing where it's like I have my own imaginary expectations instead of like trying and failing then I'm just like giving up so he basically talks about an experiment that he had where he had two groups that he randomly assigned um, where one of them would um, they were both doing the same activity with us just a small difference they were both trying to uh, use a basic programming um, game to get a car through a maze and uh, they were they would code while doing it and so the only difference was that one group without any co context given every time they made an error would say that they were deducted five points out of a pool of like 500 or something there was no instructions given as to what the points meant no prizes were on the line no first second third place would be no public knowledge of what you placed but like for some reason uh that really skewed what people were what what people were able to do because the other group they just were doing it no penalties imagined or perceived or otherwise and he found that uh, the people who had the deductions of imaginary pointless <laughs> pointless points um, had fewer attempts to succeed to finish the maze but a less an overall success rate people quit more often whereas the people who had the freedom to just go and go and go until they learned and got to the end had more attempts to get to the end but had a higher success rate, more people finished it. And it was really interesting to talk, see that difference and uh, how even if it's something meaningless, like imaginary internet points that don't mean anything, still was enough to drive people away from wanting to actually uh, take part of the exam because they would just quit and not learn. or And then they would... Yeah, so he the, the likening to the Super Mario effect is he talked about how when he was a kid, he would play video games, being the original Super Mario Bros. And him and his friends would always talk about how they were doing, how far they got, if they'd rescued Princess Peach yet. And it was always the same where it was just like, uh, no, yeah, I got to World 5, and but then this killed me, and then, oh, that killed me, and... It was never about the fact that they kept failing. It was just how they could get better, how they could continue to get closer and closer to Bowser and finally rescue Princess Peach. And so he talks about how the focus was always on Princess Peach rather than falling into the pits and getting hit by uh, Goombas and shells. And so it really kind of just lends to this idea that, like, you know, you're, you're uh, limited only by this fear of failure because... I don't, I don't know. There's there's this famous saying that I've always heard that's like... I, th I want to say it was Winston Churchill that said it, but... Um, 
it's what is it failure a man who's never failed has never learned anything new i think is what it is or something along those lines i'm not gonna pretend like i know it verbatim but it's so true like you learn just as much if not more from your failures as you do from your successes all right here we are on this boat got ourselves a summer edition yacht top brands of 1984 oh gosh and a head and some entry oh my gosh somebody got freaking desperate little teddy bear got ourselves some uh, missing boy carton some money oh my gosh that's so creepy can you like get rid of that nope okay oh look at that a cassette got ourselves a uh, captain oh look at that it's one of the monsters it's one of the monsters got ourselves some snacks got ourselves a oh look at that you can sleep here that's cool this would be flipping dope oh Megan Cross that's interesting added notes to note section this is a sweet little yacht anything over here oh nice rope very nice more rope love it okay well then uh, but yeah so I don't know think about it tell me what you guys think tell me if I'm crazy but like I really do feel like failure is one of those things where it's just like yeah sometimes there are certain deadlines like for example school and stuff like oh you don't want to fail your class things like that but like just think of the potential of how much you could learn by not scared of failing at it looking dumb at something new all that stuff I think you could learn and do so much more but uh, I don't know maybe that's just me okay we're doing good we got ourselves a little garden going on here I think that bush is bigger even we found ourselves some notes Ugh, look how creepy that is it's so freaking creepy all right cool well then um oh wait did I see boats boats there it is small raft house boat nice oh we've got rope now too let's do it let's build a boat <laughs> There we go, okay. Wow. Nice. Now I can get around. Oh, this is nice. Travel the seven seas. I guess, I don't know. They didn't show any sea monsters. Maybe that was an old trailer and they've released DLC since then and I'm about to get eaten by zombie sharks like I said a little while ago, but... Uh, so I have, like, no fear of the water, ironically, which is usually the opposite, and that's in partly due just to the fact that I am, uh, in real life scared of water, deep water. I don't like it when I can't touch the, uh, floor. All right, how much more? Okay, let's, uh, some rope, a rock, and a stick. That's like, yeah, most basic cra- yeah, most basic crafting ever. Oh, wait, but that was, like, that was part of more crafting. That was, like, half of- Oh! <gasps> Interesting. Alright, no, we're done. We're done. We're done. Sweet. Alright. Oh, I missed it. Missed that one, too. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. That was super overkill. But we got some sweet, sweet feathers out of it. What's this? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Upgraded stick. Block is great. Speed is great. Damage is poop. Alright, that barely does anything. I'm gonna just... 
stick to this big boy, the damage dealer, the honker of all honkers. Maybe this will like, nope, okay, still doesn't do anything. Okay, well, think over what I was telling you guys about failure. Maybe that's holding you back. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me. Uh, but uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. All that yummy, funny, funny. All that yum, fun stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hope everybody's doing all right. Doing okay. And as always, tune in next time. Take it easy, guys.